we reciting the Quran, we giving charity, we making dhikr, we sending the root upon the Blessed Prophet Everybody is always involved at some point or the other in acts of worship. But the question is, do you attain sweetness in that act of worship? How much of sweetness do you attain while you are actively engaged in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's our topic of discussion for today. Attaining sweetness in worship. Because one is going through the motions of presenting yourself for salah, for example. So I presented myself in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm bowing and I'm prostrating before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm actively engaged in the act of worship. How much of life is there in that worship? I'm reciting the Quran. I'm doing an act of worship. Is there any spirituality attached to that act of worship? That's what we're going to focus on today. When we look at the people of the past, start right from the Blessed Prophet and take the example of Salah. The Prophet said, He said that the coolness of my eyes has been placed in Salah and prayer. What does that mean? It means that the Blessed Prophet got such an amazing sense of satisfaction when performing Salah that he wanted to do it as much as possible. That's why he would stand the entire night praying before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would bow down in prostration for lengthy periods of time worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would stand till his feet would swell because there was some spiritual satisfaction that was gained in that act of worship. Hence he said that the coolness of my eyes is in salah. Do I get any sweetness in my heart? Any spirituality within my soul? When I'm bowing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I'm prostrating before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at the companions of the Blessed Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you'll find that they attain such amazing spirituality in their acts of worship, hence they did it as much as possible. Always engaged in some act of worship. So do we just go through the motions of presenting ourselves and ticking the box that we have prayed or are we really praying? Do we have that sense of spirituality in our acts of worship? And this is something that we need to work on as we're coming closer to the month of Ramadan because exactly the same it is with regards to the fast. Is it just the process of staying hungry from morning till evening or is there something deeper? Is there something greater? Is it just a process of standing at night for the Taraweeh Salah and just listening to the Quran and waiting to get over with it? Or is there something greater? There is something greater. There's a lot greater. Now let's take one example of the people of the past. There was an amazing scholar by the name of Sufyan Thori, Rahimahullah. Any person that has any familiarity with the teachings of Islam, with the ahadith of the Blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they're very familiar with the name Sufyan Tawri, an amazing great scholar of the past. So one of his students tell us that on one occasion, I was performing Maghrib Salah behind Sufyan Tawri. And he started the Maghrib Salah and he started reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. And he said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Raheem, Maliki Yawmiddin, and he burst into tears. He broke down crying. And then he started again from the beginning of Surah Al Fatiha. And in between Surah Al Fatiha, again he could not contain his emotion. He broke down into tears. And it carried on like this until eventually he was able to complete Surah Al Fatiha and subsequently complete the Salah. So the, his student standing behind him after the Salah made a statement and he said, that there is so much to cry about only with regards to Surah Al-Fatiha but to Allah do we complain of the hardness of our hearts we can't comprehend, we not move, we not touched by it but here was Sufyan Tawri that could not even complete reciting Surah Al-Fatiha because of the emotion and the spiritual attachment to the meaning or the deeper meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha there was something amazing in that why he was engaged in that act of worship that made him so emotional. Do I ever become emotional when I am engaged in any act of worship? How much of that emotion comes to the fore? How much of spirituality is within my heart and within my soul? And again, we're going to repeat the statement, is it just a process of going through the motion or is there something deeper and there's something greater that we need to focus on? 
There's definitely something deeper. There's definitely something greater that we have to focus on. Because in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is such amazing satisfaction. There is such amazing sweetness. And you can find it nowhere else. As I was exploring this topic, one of the points that I came across, and I wish to share it with each and every one of us, inshallah, it will be a means of benefit. They say that when it comes to the pleasures of the world, so as I read the point, it stated the following, that the pleasure of this world is always short-lived and it's only one fold, it only happens once. Any joy or happiness you experience in the world, it's only one fold. It's for that moment and it's temporary, it comes to an end. It never lasts forever. In fact, sometimes moments of joy are temporary and they're followed by heartache and they're followed by disappointment. But when it comes to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the benefit of that is threefold. But before I go to the benefit of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I read it, I said, let's give benefit of doubt. The enjoyment of the world sometimes can be more than onefold. It's when you enjoy that moment, and then sometimes when you're thinking back at the moment. We remember the good times, we remember the happy times. I had an amazing time with my family. I had an amazing holiday. I had an amazing experience. So when you remember it, you still feel a sense of joy. So maximum it will be is two. But when it comes to enjoyment in Allah's worship, then that is threefold. And why is the threefold? Number one, when you actively engage in that act of worship, there's definitely a sense of spirituality and a sense of sweetness and enjoyment and fulfillment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you within your heart, within your mind and within your soul. That's number one. Number two, when you also think back and reflect over that good, good moment, when you were actively engaged in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's worship, the most simplest example, how many of us present here have been for the journey of Hajj? Okay, I'm not asking you to raise your hand, but Alhamdulillah, if you've been near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accept your Hajj. But even if it was 40 years ago, right now, just think back to that moment, just think back to the journey, you already feel the sweetness within your heart, within your mind. It's as fresh as ever. The second benefit, when you remember your good deed, Allah gives you a sense of sweetness right at that very moment. And the third benefit of a good deed, or attaining sweetness in Allah's worship is ultimately when you see the benefit of that good deed when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it benefits you three times. Why you engage in the act of worship, when you remember that act of worship, and ultimately when you see the real benefit of that act of worship when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But every other joy that the world has to offer is absolutely temporary. It's short-lived. It doesn't last forever. And often it is followed by disappointment or heartache. Take any example. A person is happily married, he's enjoying many wonderful moments, years of a happy marriage, followed by disappointment. Allah forbid, one of the spouses leave this world, it's followed by disappointment. Allah forbid, the marriage breaks down, it's followed by disappointment. That's the reality of the world. It was never meant to adequately satisfy you because it's not your home, it's a journey. Unexpected things happen while you're on a journey. Now let's focus on this aspect of attaining sweetness in our ibadah. Allah will worship in you, but we want that sweetness in your worship. So let's identify what good deed is something that we're comfortable doing and we love doing. Once you've identified that act of worship, now start working on attaining sweetness in that worship. Allah, am I feeling something? I love to recite the Quran. Am I feeling something when I'm reciting the Quran? And let's make this attitude our build up to this month of Ramadan 1445. We want to attain sweetness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's worship. One scholar said that in the dunya jannatun, he said that in this world there is a paradise. And he said whoever does not manage to enter the paradise of this world, it's unlikely that he's going to enter the jannah and paradise of the year after. And what is the Jannah of the world that he's referring to? Sweetness in Allah's worship. Sweetness in Allah's worship. That's a paradise in this world. And there are so many that are literally living in that paradise. They experience it multiple times a day. Being in paradise in this world. And inshallah, ultimately, we're going to be in the eternal garden of bliss. Jannah to be those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believers. And Malik bin Bina rahimahullah. He said that, do you know who is Masakin and Dunya? Do you know who are the poor people of this world? Who are the poor people of this world? If somebody has to ask us that question, 
we'll say the downtrodden of society, those who have no means, those who have no clothes, those who have no food, they have nothing of the world, that's the poor people of the world. But he said that Masakin al dunya, the actual poor people of the world, are those people that leave the world without having tasted the sweetness of Allah's recognition and His worship. There is nobody more poor, poorer than that individual that leaves the world without having tasted the sweetness of Allah's recognition and Allah's worship. Allah is giving us an opportunity of another month of Ramadan. Let's aim to enhance that spirituality of Allah's recognition, Allah's sweetness in His worship. We're going to fast, but we're going to fast differently. You need to feel some spirituality in that fast. You're going to stand for the Dalami Salah, you need to have some life in your standing. There's got to be some spirituality. You can't be focused on the clock and just waiting for it to be over. Where's the fastest reader? Where's the fastest recitation? No, you need to be living in that act of worship. It needs to be real. And another wonderful point that I wish to share with each and every one of us is that where does the strength of a believer lie? That's a question. Where does the strength of a believer lie? So the scholars tell us that the strength of a believer is not in their physical self, but it is in their spirituality. Because you will find a person that's absolutely super fit, an athlete, triathlete. He can run, he can paddle, he can do everything for hours on end. But when it comes to the worship of Allah, very difficult. Then he gets tired. 20 rakats tarawi salah, back is getting caught, knees are paining. But yet he's super fit. He'll play sport for hours on end, never gets tired, no fatigue. But in the worship of Allah, then he gets tired, then he gets fatigued, then we lazy. And then you'll see the 70 year old man, mashallah, that will be standing for all 20 rakats of the tarawi salah, no back ache, no knees paining, nothing, nothing. Where does the strength of a believer lie? You'll find a super fit person unable to wake up for the Fajr Salah. But you'll have a 75 year old man who has a track record for the last 40 years, he never missed the Fajr Salah. That's where the strength of a believer lies. It lies in our spirituality. And like how we need to nourish our body to be healthy, we need to nourish our soul so that we can worship Allah to the best of our ability. Because it is only one chance that you get to live in this world. And a life when lived is long enough. Nobody's coming back to the world. And we're on the brink of another month of Ramadan. Let us inshallah make an intention that we're going to make this a super special month of Ramadan. And we're going to work towards attaining sweetness in our worship. You have to feel that spirituality. You have to attain that sweetness in that worship. And when you do attain it, you will see how fulfilling it is. It can be gained in no other place except in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the understanding and we end with the dua Allahumma barik lana fi Sha'ban wa balimna wa mawan O Allah bless us in this month of Sha'ban and may each and every one of us reach the blessed month of Ramadan. Wa akhidu da'wana min